what is up you guys so today i'm going to talk to you guys about a scent that is really underrated that everyone has because i was having this discussion the other day with another friend of mine who also produces and we were talking about how powerful absinthe is and it's shocking to us that no one ever uses it and i can see why because it's a really when you first look at it it's a really complicated looking thing but you know, I guess that discourages people right away to not ever use it or that's too complicated to ever use. But it's really, really powerful and really awesome. It's actually one of my favorites, and I don't know why I haven't done tutorials on it yet. So I'm going to show you guys how we got this pluck sound right here. Let me just mute some stuff here. So Absinthe is capable of producing the most beautiful soft synth type of stuff or the heaviest types of bass uh, kind of stuff it's just a synth that allows you to create anything you can think of and the great thing about absinthe is and the place I learned how to use absinthe is uh, you can use absinthe in a 5.1 surround uh, sound setting I actually learned how to use this when I was taking a post-production class and we had a theater room that was uh, actually had a 7.1 uh, Adobe certified theater room and we would go mix our projects and the only synths that were compatible with that kind of sound system with all those multiple outputs and 5.1 and all that was absinthe so uh absinthe is really powerful and if you're also into post-production and those kind of things which is also which post-production just means like movies and stuff that means uh this thing you can make really cool stereo effects with this so before i get into absinthe uh which i'll go over and explain everything i did and kind of show you around absinthe because I'm going to do more absinthe stuff if you guys give me a lot of likes on this video or let me know that you guys want more absinthe stuff I'll do that so all I have here is just a slight little amount of reverb you can go ahead and copy it if you want uh, so just pause the video and copy that I'm going to move on I just did some slight EQ just to take out some things primarily just the low end and a little bit of 1k that's typically where I start and then I'll EQ it later in the mixing process to get it to have a, a tone. Um, then just a little bit of sidechain compression uh, or sidechaining. So by itself, it sounds like this. And uh, what I'm playing here is you can see I'm just playing a G2, a G3, uh, all on like a 16th note grid and when you hold out a note the LFO and sustain kicks in so you know it's it wasn't hard to make that little pattern very typical generic type of stuff right there so uh, you know what I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just uh, make another copy of this uh, not that I'm gonna recreate it because uh, the thing about absinthe is it's kind of hard to recreate something you made but I want to sh just show you from scratch uh, or what you see when you open up a new uh, absence. So this is kind of what the window shows you. And this is why I think it discourages people not to use it. Because right away when you open it up, you look at the browser and the attributes. And this isn't the synth part. This is just kind of similar to like Massive's uh, browser where you're just looking at the presets that are already there. And it's good to look at some of these and figure out you know how they made it when you go into all these sections so to go into the actual part that is the synth you go over to uh this these six boxes so perform is kind of the first place i like to s excuse me i'm burping uh the first place i like to start because uh you gotta set the polyphony so that's pretty much your voicing so how many notes can be played at the same time so three to four is good uh 16 is a, is a lot and this thing goes up to 64 so. So it is really powerful and uh, that could be a lot on your CPU. And so I think this was at three. Uh, so this is the first window and then you have your master envelope. So that's similar to uh, envelope four in massive or in silence. Uh, uh, you can set a envelope to be the master envelope or pretty much the amp envelope for each side in silence. Then you can assign controller stuff. So this is really meant to have a lot of control and you're supposed in a lot of macros and things that could just be flying around this the routing inside of this is really really powerful it's a really powerful synth i i keep saying it a lot but people have no idea like uh, once you scratch the first layer of how to use this then you can truly see how deep you can go into this kind of stuff same with reactor reactor you can uh once you get the hang of how to make synths and reactor like oh my god 
you'll just you'll just get lost in a nerdy world and so then you have some midi stuff like kind of assignments and things like that and the node and tuning and that kind of stuff so uh that's the first window but the f the only reason why i go to perform is just to uh set the polyphony uh the voices pretty much for that and that's really it then you go to patch because uh you can't do anything in wave until you've um until you've assigned an oscillator to something so this is kind of our main window this is the window where you're actually going to create and route things so uh let me just create a new sound oh i don't know why i went there so file new sound and you can make banks and you can import sounds and you can do a lot of cool stuff in here so uh it's it's completely normal except for you know it just looks abstract and different from everything else so uh, we have a main oscillator, uh, our first oscillator now. And the thing I like about this is if you go, you click on the sign uh, or the wave selector, you have all these waves, morph waves, and, ma and waves that you made yourself for user waves. So uh, I, I don't see the user waves right now, but if you go to new, then you have this awesome ability to shape the wave yourself. So you can, with this first uh, draw mode, you can uh, actually just draw in a wave that you want but uh, you know for some of you beginner producers you know try to understand what waves are and what different waves look like like what pulse waves look like or square waves pretty much and what saw waves look like and what sine waves look like just trying to get a hang of things don't just come in here and just start drawing because it's not gonna make any sense unless you know something about you know waveforms in general and then with this one you can kinda start to make a uh, like a curve so that one's really cool and then this one uh, it's kind of like a warp feature uh, with audio but except it in here so you can select a region move it up and down and you can really do really interesting stuff so you can see that wherever I move these two uh, little lines here I can move that whole section and I can apply it to the whole thing so you can create a really cool wave and then once you're done with that you uh, where is it you go to this box here and you save wave template and then you can call it whatever you want so I will just call this uh, I don't know blah 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 and then if you go back to patch then you can uh, load that in so let's see it should be in my library waves so blah 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 and that's the wave I just created and then the really cool thing is you can uh, you have all these extra things you can do to it so you can uh, make it a, like a sample mode or, or, or let me see let me click on that no sample is to bring in a sample so you can also sample stuff in here and bring it in but uh, uh, you have all these things you can do so you can see you got just a single wave two waves FM ring mod uh, all these cool things yeah that's really loud <laughs> And then you can go to the mod section and to, uh, you know, play around with that stuff. And these little box, uh, these little pointy things, that's the, uh, pretty much what you move these parameters around in. Or you could just click in and type in a value, so. And, uh, let me show you guys the sample feature. So you can, uh, bring in samples here as well. And so it takes you to this immediately. I think this is like the default uh, absence sample. So I'm just going to load in some vocal stuff. Why not? Uh, woman. And then you have all these cool, uh, like, you can loop it so if uh, loop ball will just if you hold down a note it will just play it over and over and if you go loop edit then you can kind of select how long that sample plays so where it starts up here and then it always starts you off on this really short uh, one so you got to bring this up can kind of hear a little bit of a not a click or a pop but sort of like the the repeat of it so you kind of have to play around with this and find a smooth transition and 
then so you kind of get the idea of the kinds of stuff you can do in here and then you have a lot of different stuff you can do um and then uh let's go over here so you also have filters so the filters you can see you have a, re a lot of cool ones but the favorite thing so you have all these filter options that are really superb and i really like cloud but the one that I, that's my absolute favorite is wave shape so you can apply this wave shape to most places where you see a filter box or effect and that is really cool so if we grab that wave that we made earlier uh this one we can kind of just uh, add that back in and shape this sample with that wave. And uh, let's, let's kind of phase it to find a nicer spot. It's not a really good wave, so let's just select a normal one. Let's just get a... Oh, the morph waves are really good for this kind of stuff, so uh, I think I really like the analog ones. Maybe it's too harsh. Uh, where's the volume out? Well, it doesn't sound that good. <laughs> so maybe not that, but I'll just add in a normal high pass. I wish they had a uh, you know the 24 dB slopes on here as well, but I mean that's fine. So you can see the filter, and all I have to do to turn it off is double click it or click it, uh, click on it. And it's really that easy. And then you have a modulation for that. So you have uh, frequency shifters and all the same stuff pretty much. So you can kind of add two filters onto uh, anything. You could add uh, multiple things. So you can kind of see how effects-based this is. And then, of course, at the bottom, you have the volume for this oscillator. So if you think of massive, this is like your amp volume right here. And then, uh, so you pretty much you can start combining different oscillators and you know transposing them down and then you have all this stuff so you kind of get the idea of what you're ca able to do but there's so much more and then you have another wave shaper down here or you could turn it into another filter and then you can add another filter so it's really simple it's all the same components but just it gives you a lot of routing options and things like that and then you have the final effects at the end of this and also uh, turning uh, clicking on this little feature uh, makes the routing simpler and it kind of sounds more uh, wholesome I I forgot what the technical word for it is but uh, uh, it it's sometimes good to just play around with this so this little arrow right here see what see what I mean so uh, also this little box right here this is uh, uh, again, if you're in like 5.1 uh, or some stereo field, you can use this right here. So you click on this, and then you can kind of pan things out different spots in the stereo field. I'll turn that off for now. And also, if you look at the output here, you can see that there's the two, the left and the right. And then you have center and far left, far right, and, you know, sub and whatever else so i think there's up to seven so this is probably a 7.1 format or let me see i don't know something like that and then for the final effect you uh you can click here and go to parameters and then you have these different options like pipe multi-comb multi-tap echoes resonators and this final. and if you notice on all of these like you have the surround so if you click on the surround uh, again this is best used in a 5.1 surround setting most of us just have two monitors maybe a third uh, monitor which would be a sub but in most cases this is just to exaggerate something so you can you know play around with the spread <laughs> and uh that's pretty much it so you can kind of get the the idea there and then you have a lfo section and the lfo i like to set it to beats and then to kind of feel out the the timing of it i set the pan up just so i can hear the lfo clearly so the way to use it on beat is uh the smaller the uh, the the ratio uh the quicker the lfo and the higher the uh, ratio, the slower. So now that I kind of have
have a sense of uh, how fast this is. I can also change the wave here. The LFO pretty much. And I can phase it, which will just uh, start it sooner or later or in a different spot from where it normally starts. And then I'll turn this off. And then you can LFO, you know, different oscillators, the master, uh, you know, all this different stuff. You could set a pitch to like seven and uh, just click on all the oscillators and uh, use the LFO for that. And then, you know, re-trigger. And so that's pretty much kind of how you do everything inside of this. So uh, I know I said I was going to show you how to make that pluck thing. I'm just going to give it out to you guys so this video isn't like a really long video. I just kind of wanted to more show you guys how to use this. And, uh, you know, it's not as complicated as it looks. But then again, it does have a steep learning curve. And you definitely can make really unique stuff in here. And this is really just a fun synth to use when you're kind of tired of the other ones you know the more popular ones that everyone uses and you get really unique sounds with this one and then again you can always save them have your own banks and presets and uh then if you go back to the browser and you click on your own preset you then you can uh you know play with these parameters right here so it's fine tuning so you can add more bass reso distortion And this is kind of like a, a little matrix that you can see that just uh, modulates and mutates this stuff. Uh, so you can select certain parameters in your sound uh, that you want to mod uh, to mutate, which is pretty much a randomized bun. So you know how massive has a random bun, and so does that mate. Well, you can uh, mutate this and click on certain parameters; those will be changed slightly. And then you have a, hu a history, so if you found one that you liked, you can actually go back to it and recall it. So you, it's really powerful stuff right here. And then again, you can always go to effects. Uh, oh, no, actually, this is still in the browser. Effects. and Oh, I didn't even show the uh, envelope. So the envelope is a really neat section. So you have the master envelope here, so the main envelope. So I like to kind of do something like this. And I'm just going to add a new envelope so you can have as many envelopes as you want and pretty much put on everything if you wanted to. And uh, let's see. Let's go to our... Where the hell is it? Um, I swear I saw it in here the other day. I'm trying to find the main envelope uh, that I can show here. But let's see if I can click on it here. Um, let's just go to show all. So it's going to show me all the envelopes. So it's the three oscillators here. Uh, the main pitch is in this one. Okay, so you, the reason why it's stopping here is because this one is on uh, sustain. So if you click on any one of the, your envelopes, you have different modes and you can sync and bypass and all that stuff. And then you can have a grid and lock in and blah, blah, blah and slide. But uh, the mode is uh, pretty much the way it, well, it's just different modes. So release is the typical one that you're used to. So no matter what I press, uh, this is going to uh, release without me uh, telling it to. And that's really cool when you do it to the pitch of something and release it like that because then it sounds like that turntable stuff. And that's kind of how you can do that effect here. Um, and then sustain, it will stop right here at the last. So this is the attack, uh, decay, sustain, release. So it will stop at the sustain. As long as you hold that note, it will stay at, at this point point right here but as soon as I let go of that note it will start to release and then you have loops and re-triggers and all this other stuff so you again uh, it's really cool and then you can add LFOs to your envelopes again that's really neat so let's add a square wave and so you can mod so you can LFO your envelopes just like uh, you know you how you could route it to be like that and massive and such by adding an envelope and then follow that with the sidechain 
LFO, the, you could do the same thing here, but you can actually kind of see what you're doing better. So hopefully this is a, a good introduction video into uh, Absinthe for all you guys. I'm going to be doing a bunch more Absinthe stuff, also with my Massive and FM8 and Silent stuff. I want to get into Razor and Cyclops because those are other synths that uh, there's a lack of uh, videos for. Uh, just because I kind of feel like I'm doing generic stuff with like massive and silent tutorials. Uh, I just kind of want to do things that are a little different as well. And, you know, I feel like if as long as I'm doing different things, then uh, that'll be good for everyone. So, guys, if you want more absence stuff, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching, like always.